welcome back to part 3 of my beginner's guide to redstone. Today we'll be looking at OR gates and AND gates, as well as their counterparts NOR gates and NAND gates, but we'll get to that in a second. This is an OR gate, and the way it works is if any of these inputs here, this one has three, if any of the inputs are on, this output, this is the output, will be on as well. But if only all the inputs are off, then the output will be off. So if one input's on, the output turns on. If all of them are on, doesn't matter. As long as one of these inputs are on, the output will be on. Pretty simple rule. Only when all of them are off, the output's off. The way it works is as long as any of these to uh, these you know leads, redstone dust trails, um, if any of them on, they'll turn this torch off no matter what, which um, uh, lets this torch turn on because it stops supplying power. Now, to, to make this into a NOR gate, you need to first remove this block, get rid of the torch, then put a redstone torch here, and connect it up again. And the way a NOR gate works, it, the output will be on unless any of the inputs are on. So it's the opposite basically. So if an input's on, or all of them, or any of them, it doesn't matter. As long as one input's on, the output is off. Only if all the inputs are off is the output on. So that is the NOR gate. Now this is the AND gate. Mainly just these three blocks here. These are the two inputs. This is the output. This is the output lead, just so you can see easily. And the way it works is only if both inputs are on will the output be on. So one input on doesn't work. If both inputs are off doesn't work. Only if both inputs are on will the output turn on. Basically because if either one of these torches are on it will turn this torch off. So both these torches need to be turned off by the inputs. And you can turn this into a NAND gate by removing the torch and replacing it with redstone dust. And basically, a NAND gate is not AND. So as long as they're both not on, it'll turn on. So if one if if one's on, st still on. If both are off, still on. But if both are on, then it'll turn off. And so that is your NAND gate for you. Now, for the practical purposes of these gates, the OR gate, pretending that these are all different locations around a base or something, you can string inverters or repeaters or anything like that along to increase the length, but they could be anywhere, but you want them all to do the same thing, or all turn the same dispenser on or whatever, turn the same torch off doesn't matter but you can use an OR gate to connect all of these from different places so pretending these are like hundreds of blocks away you could theoretically have them all control one door or something like that y you know you gotta use your imagination it's more you know for your personal use and for the AND gate um, a very good thing that that's quite useful for it is I mean you can use it in you know adders and stuff, but we're not going to go into that for ages. But, um, what is that red stuff? Oh, flowers. I was just curious. <laughs> um, so pretending, well, it would work better with levers, but I can try. Now you see how the door opened? Only when both of them were pressed. You could have it so like that, and then you could hook it up to what's called a memory cell. Well, that'll be in a future tutorial. And a memory cell is basically just going to stay on until it receives power from a different thing. So you could two people have to do this because they're going to be further away so two people have to um, press the buttons for the door to open and then when you've walked through then it'll t um, close so you could use that as like a safety lock or anything but um, still very you know they're, they're very multi-purposeful you can use them for practically anything just depends on what it is but basically that's it for this tutorial so Thanks for watching, don't forget to rate, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.